I've been meaning to read it for a while. Salt of Smoke, a global adventure in wireless electronics by Bill Mira, N2CQR. It's hard to classify this book. Part biography, part theory, part travelogue and part history. Largely in chronological order, the book starts off with a description of Bill's early years. For many who got into radio at a similar age, like I did, many will ring true. For instance, Bill is intrigued by shortwave, gets a general coverage receiver and then discovers amateurs talking. Wanting to join them, he finds a radio club and gets his novice licence. After a year on the air, he upgrades to general, working more and more DX. This is followed by a spell of inactivity. It is at this time that Bill starts his career, first of all in the military, then into university where he changes from engineering to the arts, and then as a diplomat, representing America in countries all around the world. It was in this diplomatic period that Bill returned to amateur radio activity. Being a diplomat can be fairly lonely. Your frequent postings and house moves mean it's hard to put down roots and develop long-term friendships. Amateur radio proved to be somewhat of a substitute and was one of the reasons why Bill got back into radio during his time serving in other countries. Bill discovered, as you'll read in the book, that amateur radio and amateurs are much the same all over the world. You'll enjoy the experiences from finding parts in the back streets of the Dominican Republic to adventures in the UK, Spain, Rome and the Azores. One of the things about this book is it puts amateur radio in a broader human and scientific context. Not just a theory book where the topic is narrowly about amateur radio and if you're lucky with a bit of electronics thrown in, but looking at amateur radio as non-amateurs see us and we see non-amateurs. There are a lot of things that amateurs who've been around for a long time take for granted, but those new to radio might not. They need to be told the sort of things that are in this book. Here's a passage from the book where Bill writes about calling CQ and reminds us how unusual it is in other areas of human endeavour. One of the best things about these contacts was that I was communicating with people who seemed as thrilled as I was about the whole thing. Amateur radio may be unique in what I guess we could call its culture of CQ. CQ is telegraphic shorthand for a general call to any station. It's the ham radio way of shouting, hey, is anyone out there who can hear me who's willing to talk? Almost anywhere else in human society, a stranger heard shouting this question would raise our eyebrows and get suspicious. The response would probably be, well, who are you? Why are you seeking a conversation in this way? And what would you talk about? That's one of the things that makes ham radio special. These kinds of questions are never asked of us. When he hears a CQ, the other ham knows the answers. The caller is a fellow radio amateur. He's calling CQ because that's what we do. These are the sorts of things that radio theory and regulation books do not necessarily cover. They might not even be taught through radio study courses. Yet it's core to understanding what amateur radio is all about. For that reason alone, I would recommend this book's reading to anyone new to amateur radio. This book tells it as it is. Many explanations you read of things may not make sense, and the project you attempt may not work first time. Bill is generous in conveying how he came to understand things. That understanding is enabled by the contribution of hundreds, if not thousands of amateurs around the world. For instance, through an article in Sprat, Leon Williams, VK2DOB, is credited with helping Bill understand how mixes work. That name possibly rings a bell, since it's the source of the double sideband and single sideband transceiver kits that we've reviewed in previous videos. Many of us can identify with Bill's early days in radio. I certainly can. For instance, Bill used the 1973 AWRL handbook. That was the exact book that I used to build my first transmitter, a one-valve novice transmitter using a tube called the 69. 
I didn't have that, but I used a substitute, a triode pentode from an old TV, a 6GV8, and had good results, including making my first contacts. First light, as telescope builders call it. The joy of hearing your first signals on a receiver you built yourself. Nearly as good as getting your first contacts on a transmitter you built yourself. Both experiences that Bill recommends all amateurs enjoy. Bill's progress in the transmitter department was what was called a Michigan Mighty Might, a very simple crystal controlled CW transmitter. But Bill wanted more, more power, more conversation and more contacts. That was provided first of all with some double sideband transmitters and then single sideband. That allowed DX working in conjunction with a companion amplifier. I'm sure many of us builders have had similar journeys. A common theme of the book, based on Bill's experiences, is the international brotherhood of amateur radio, and more broadly, those who have the knack. It's clear the author derived inspiration far and wide. Names are always mentioned, and without exception, I suggest you search on them once you read the book. I really enjoyed reading the book and recommend that you do likewise. Whether you're an experienced or new ham, you'll get something out of it. Details about Solar Smoke, Global Adventures in Wireless Electronics are below. Or you can search the title in Amazon. Bill's blog is solarsmoke.com. Thanks to Bill Mira, N2CQR, for the review copy.